This oxygen maker changes everything. Elon Musk's extraordinary plan to transport humans to Mars seems a few years away from becoming a reality. But the oxygen that they'll need for experiments and to survive in the Martian world may already be waiting for them on the planet even before they arrive there. Join us in today's video as we explore this incredible oxygen maker that changes everything. The idea that humans could one day walk and live on Mars has been around for a while. But of course, like every new daring space project, this idea is not without its own challenges. First and foremost, we've got to figure out how to get there. Because as we all know, the current space transportation technologies are not efficient enough to transport humans to Mars as fast as we'd like. For context, the Parker Solar Probe, which is the fastest spacecraft in the world, needs around 111 days to complete a one-way trip to the Red Planet. And there's absolutely no gain saying that if we ever attempted to send astronauts to Mars abroad the Parker Solar Probe, we'd need to find a way to keep them alive throughout the journey. Perhaps more importantly, we also need to sort out the issue of how astronauts will breathe on the Red Planet. And that's exactly where the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, MOXIE, comes in. You see, oxygen is a scarce commodity on Mars. According to scientists, oxygen makes up about 0.13% of the Martian atmosphere. So in other words, for astronauts to be able to breathe on Mars, they're either going to have to carry oxygen along from Earth or find a way to create oxygen when they arrive in the Martian world. The first option sounds really feasible. After all, we have plenty of oxygen on Earth, we could just stuff as much as we want into several cylinders and carry it along to Mars. Sounds easy, right? Well, the process behind this method is much more complicated than you think. First off, we still haven't found a solution to the tyranny of the rocket equation, which states that, as payload mass increases, so does the amount of propellant required to break free of Earth's gravitational grip. So depending on the rocket and the intended mission, propellant fuel typically makes up between 70 to 90% of the rocket's mass. So if you can imagine how much fuel we'll need to transport astronauts, oxygen, and other essentials to Mars, obviously this is not sustainable. And this leaves us with option two, which is to produce oxygen on Mars. Naturally, when you think of mining oxygen outside our planet, you immediately think about how oxygen is created in the International Space Station, ISS. The ISS, as you know, has been in existence for about two decades, and astronauts working aboard it have been living on oxygen. So how exactly have they been able to do this? Basically, the ISS has two interconnected systems that support the existence of life on the space hub. They are known as the Water Reclamation System, WRS, and its companion, which is known as the Oxygen Generation System, OGS. The WRS, in its part, converts urine humidity and condensation to become drinkable water. It sounds quite disgusting when you think about it, especially for Earthlings like us, but astronauts don't have much of an option. As Douglas Wheelock puts it, yesterday's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. In other words, the sweat and urine that astronauts pass out today is the water they drink tomorrow. Part of the water produced by the WRS is directed into the OGS system, which converts it to breathable air for the ISS crew using a technique known as electrolysis. Basically, this technique involves running an electric current through water to break it down and produce hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is collected and distributed to astronauts. Meanwhile, the hydrogen is channeled into the saboteur system, which in turn combines it with carbon dioxide to produce water and methane as well as heat. This water is pushed back into the water system while the heat is directed into the heat exchange system. However, the methane produced from this process is considered as a waste, and that's one of the biggest issues with this method. This brings us to MOXIE, which is the next level of mining oxygen in space. Riding aboard the Perseverance rover, MOXIE arrived on the Red Planet on the 18th of February 2021. Designed by some brilliant inventors from MIT, MOXIE is about the same size as a microwave oven, but it is definitely one of our biggest space inventions in the last decade. MOXIE has clearly served as inspiration to the ISRU community. Michael Hecht of MIT, who served as the instrument's principal investigator said, it showed NASA is willing to invest in these kinds of future technologies, and it has been a flagship that has influenced the exciting industry of space resources. 
Unlike the situation on the ISS, the water reclamation system isn't available on Mars, so the only way to produce oxygen in the Martian world is to either go towards the north or south to find ice or perhaps dig under the ground to get ice and refine it. But MOXIE wasn't designed to do any of these. Instead, it is designed to refine water from carbon dioxide. And thankfully, around 96% of the atmosphere on Mars is made up of carbon dioxide, meaning that if everything goes as planned, MOXIE could someday be responsible for the oxygen that scientists will need on Mars. According to reports, it is believed that MOXIE breaks down carbon dioxide into oxygen through a procedure known as solid oxide electrolysis. Think of it as burning a fuel source, or a few fuel cells in reverse. Since it was launched in 2021, MOXIE has reportedly produced around 122 grams of oxygen. That's just about the amount of oxygen a small dog needs to breathe for 10 hours. At the peak of its performance, MOXIE reportedly produced up to 12 grams of oxygen. This oxygen obtained from the efficient production session alone is two times more oxygen than the NASA officials were hoping to get from the entire mission. Now that's a massive achievement because it means that MOXIE has performed beyond expectation and the pioneers of the mission are absolutely excited by the news. We're proud to have supported a breakthrough in technology like MOXIE that could turn local resources into useful products for future exploration missions, Trudy Cortez. NASA's Director of Technology Demonstrations, Space Technology Missions Directorate, STMD, said, By proving this technology in real-world conditions, we've come one step closer to a future where astronauts live off the land on the Red Planet. In other words, MOXIE has all but confirmed that it is possible for humans to survive on Mars without having to bring along oxygen from Earth. However, when you compare the amount of oxygen produced by MOXIE to the amount of oxygen that astronauts will have when they arrive on Mars, there's a significant gap between them, and that's a real worry. As we mentioned earlier, MOXIE has generated 122 grams since it started operating on Mars around two and a half years ago. But an average human would need about 22,916 grams of oxygen to survive for an hour. However, there's a twist to this whole issue. MOXIE hadn't actually been working for the entire duration of its time on Mars. NASA officials say, in a bid to save energy, they only turn on the oxygen maker at intervals. So far, MOXIE has extracted oxygen from the Martian atmosphere a total of 16 times. You might be thinking, why have NASA decided to turn on MOXIE at intervals when they could just leave it on for the entirety of the mission? Well, apparently, we don't have enough energy to do that. The Perseverance rover which houses and supplies power to MOXIE, is only capable of producing just about a little over 100 watts of energy. In comparison, an average household in the US consumes 960 watts of energy per day. Assuming we have a bigger power source on Mars and we're able to upscale the oxygen production capacity of MOXIE, we could be able to sustain astronauts on Mars in the coming years. Beyond the production of oxygen, the elements refined by MOXIE could also be used as propellant fuel. In fact, some of the top officials in the space industry say this gadget could also be deployed to the lunar surface to support future human missions on the moon. MOXIE's impressive performance shows that it is feasible to extract oxygen from Mars's atmosphere, oxygen that could help supply breathable air or rocket propellant to future astronauts, Pam Melroy, NASA's deputy administer said. Developing technologies that let us use resources on the Moon and Mars is critical to build a long-term lunar presence, create a robust lunar economy, and allow us to support an initial human exploration campaign to Mars. But rather than build a bigger version of MOXIE, engineers are looking to create a full-scale system that will not only be able to produce, but also liquefy and store oxygen. And by all standards, that would be a revolutionary invention.